Hello Georgetown, I'm Beverly Enos and you're watching Spotlight Georgetown. You can find us Friday, Saturdays and Sundays, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. on your local cable station. And as part of your local cable station, that's how we're here. If you'd like to learn how to run a camera or do some editing, if you would like to come down and play with all the fancy toys they have here, they've got all the equipment, no training necessary, they'll teach you everything that you need to know. So, we'd love to have you down and join us, and if you have someone that would like to be interviewed, please let me know as well. We'll make that happen. Now, today we're going to be talking to Terry Hart, and we're going to be talking about the Veterans Services, right? That's correct. Okay. Now, you are the Director of Veterans Services for Eastern Essex District, Department of Veterans Services. Big title. <laughs> well, it's just a long title. <laughs> it's a long title. The, uh, uh, the Eastern Essex District is seven towns in this area. It's, uh, the core city is Ipswich, and we also do uh, Hamilton, Wenham, Essex, Rowley, West Newbury, and Georgetown. Okay. Um, now, where, where is your office? It's in Ipswich as my core city. Oh, okay. All right. So, hours? Hours are, are 8 until 4, Monday through Thursday, and 8 until noon on Friday. Okay, and this is at the Town Hall in Ipswich? Town Hall in Ipswich. Okay, mm -hmm. that can't be too hard to, to find. It can't be, but, you know, for those who can't get out, I think it's important they know that, you know, why we also advertise that we'll come to you. You know, that's my job is to take care of veterans and their widows, and I'll go wherever they need me to go to take care of them. Okay, I didn't realize that. Now, um... An overview of your clients and what types of services? Well, first of all, you know, when we talk about veteran services, obviously the veterans are, are the, the premier clients. But we also, based on a program that's been around in Massachusetts since the Civil War, uh, we are taking care of veterans, their widows, and their orphans. That is what we are, are charged to do. So we take care of veterans and their families, basically. Um, you know, in terms of programs, it's anything that has to do with a, a state, local, or federal program involving veterans that uh, the benefits that they are entitled to under any of these programs um, or anything else that they just need help with. Okay. Um, chapter 115. Chapter 115 is the state program. It is a veterans benefits program for low-income veterans or their widows or their families. Uh, generally speaking, if somebody's income is less than twice the poverty level, for an individual that's around $1,950 a month gross, uh, for a couple that's around 25, 20, or I'm sorry, 22 to 2300 uh, per month, we can assist them in one way or another, providing their assets are less than, and, and the book says $3,200. But in all of these programs, there's some latitude. And the latitude has to do with us taking a look at their assets and saying, look, you can actually legitimately put these assets in certain places and we can still help you. Or if your income is above those levels, we can do a spend down to get you to the, uh, to the assistance you need. Okay, now what kind of assistance do you offer? I mean... For the Chapter 115, most of that assistance is money. Okay. We provide money. For those who are actually well below the poverty level, we give them ordinary benefits, a, a check every month written by the towns, and, uh, and it's all formula-based, So uh, and the town gets reimbursed three-quarters of that in the following year. So it's not like it's e by the state. So it's, it's, it is a program in that regard that um, assists and gives a leg up to people. The we have an adjunct to that program that started about 10 years ago called a medical only budget and a medical only budget if they're 65 or older means that we are going to reimburse their medicare we're going to pay all their health insurance costs and we are going to pick up all of their co-pays so wow. that they have virtually once they come on the program if they're eligible they have no medical expenses at that point we're making sure that their med medical expenses are covered by the town do people even know that these programs are out there? Well, we try to get the word out to them. <laughs> like this? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, why is it necessary to have service work for veterans and their families? There is nothing as confusing as trying to deal with a federal government, state government, and local government programs all intertwined. Um, 
the federal government and the VA especially are not exactly known for being user friendly. Right, red tape. Red tape, absolutely, a lot of red tape. And a lot of these programs overlap. Um, good example, I had a gentleman in my office this morning who had just gotten, we had just gotten him 100% service connected disability out of Vietnam. And that meant that he was also eligible for an annuity from the state. His wife was eligible for something called CHAMP VA, complete medical coverage out of the federal government because he's 100%. And he gets tax break from his town, and a property tax break. All of these things are intertwined. And that's why people should come to me because I know hopefully all of this stuff. Okay, education benefits. The current program is the, uh, the post 9-11 GI Bill. Now the GI Bill has been around of course since after World War II. Excellent thing for the World War II generation to go ahead and, and get off to college. But the one thing they always forgot during all this GI Bill period was how do you feed your family, yourself, live yeah. while you're get, going to school? Yes, they're, they're taking care of your college, but you still have to live. So most of the GIs coming back World War II, Korea, Vietnam, had to actually work at night, go to school during the day. The post 9-11 GI Bill looks at that from the standpoint of, we want you to study, we want you to get a leg up. You've served your country, it's time for us to give back something to you. So they are now paying all of these young people uh, at an E-5 housing rate to make sure that they have housing money so that they can go ahead and live while they're going to college and not worry as much wow. about a job. This is since 9-11. Um, motor vehicle benefits. Eh, small ones, but if, if certain people, if you've gotten certain awards while you're in the military, Purple Heart, Bronze Star, or higher awards, your license plates are free. And that means your registration of your vehicle is free. And I can assist people in getting those. They just need well, to know it's out there for them. Yeah, I had no idea. Um, employment assisting? We are linked in with all the Division of Employment and Training offices throughout the area. Um, if a veteran comes to me and he's younger than 65 and he's able to work, I'm supposed to put him on a work program to get him employment. Uh, he has to work through these DET offices. We work together. We're trying very hard to get them jobs. I would like to say I have a lot of success. I have not had a lot of success in the last eight years or so. I think I've helped about three people get employment because there aren't any jobs out there. Yeah, true. True. Um, federal benefits. Compensation for service-related disabilities. Anybody, and, and a lot of people don't think of this in terms of, well, I, I served and nothing was wrong with me, therefore I don't want anything, or get, leave it for the other guys who have gotten hurt. The reality is if it happened to you in service, it is service-connected, it can cause you a lot of problems later on in your life, and you need to make that claim as soon as you can. It is a bottomless pit of money. It's the federal government. They have plenty. Uh, we have more than enough people each year who are <laughs> passing the bar, and, uh, and these new people coming up, there's plenty for them in that. And I, I say that because there's a lot of little things that people don't realize. You come out of service, you've been um, on an aircraft carrier, just doing, doing your duty, um, assisting with the, the launching and the recovery of airplanes but you're listening to high-pitched turbine noise and you probably have tinnitus, which is that high-pitched ringing in your ear, it'll never go away. And if you've been around turbines or, or any kind of uh, high-pitched whines like that, that's very common. That's a 10% service-connected disability. A 10% service-connected disability gets you a $400 tax abatement on your property. It gets you $129 a month, I think it is right now, and it makes you a service-connected disabled veteran. And if you own a small business, there are special programs that help service-connected disabled small businesses with their, uh, the, the governor just set aside 3% of all government contracts for the state to service-connected small business employees. Wow. So there are all kinds of little things like that. And people need to know that, that those are there. They need to figure it out. And the way to figure it out is come see me. Okay, so you would, if somebody came, 
and you would fill out the paperwork, file whatever claim it was. We appeal. absolutely, and, and you know the the VA is changing continuously, not always for the better, but they are changing, and it's important that right now in today's society, any young veteran can go online and make his own claim. He'll probably mess it up. He <laughs> probably will not get it done inside of a year. The claims process right now, they have a fully developed claims process. If you come through me and you do what I ask you to do in terms of getting the records I need, we can have your claim adjudicated in approximately 100 days. Uh, Good. But without that, the VA just kind of tosses it aside and says we get to it when we get to it. Which could be never. Well, they just now made a big uh, um, splash in the news about how they've gotten the two-year-old claims done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that doesn't sound too good. Um, home loans. Do you help with those? Any, sir, any veteran who has an honorable discharge is eligible for a VA home loan. Is it a home loan from the VA? No. It's a VA guaranteed loan. And the value to a VA loan is that it's low money or no money down. And if it's new construction, the VA makes sure that new construction is done correctly. You still work through your local bank. You still use the, the same mm -hmm. uh, interest rates. But the VA is involved in the process, and they will assist you with that process. And when people today are required to put 10 to 20% down, this makes a big difference. So people shouldn't wait until they're retirement age to come and see you? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We hope the young people will come in too. I know it's a little harder for them. They're out hustling, trying to get jobs or, or working at a job. But yeah, they should they should spend a little time come in and see me. And an hour or two, we can go over just about everything that they, uh, they need to know. Okay. Um, TRICARE. TRICARE is the military retirement system okay. or medical. And there are always some problems with TRICARE here and there. Uh, those who were uh, service, those who were married to people in the service mm -hmm. will remain the, remember the old Champus? TRICARE is the old Champus where you're taking care of all of your medical through the military organizations. Um, it's not a difficult system for the most part to navigate, but it can be a headache. As always, it can be a headache. Okay. Um. Burial benefits. Every veteran has three things that they're entitled to, no matter whether they have a service connection or not. Flag on their coffin, honors by an organization, and a VA marker on their grave. And that's absolute for every veteran. And we will assist with that, but we also work very closely with all the funeral directors to make sure that they know exactly how to do that too, mm -hmm. and get them the, uh, that to which they're entitled. It becomes important when somebody is in their 60s or 70s and suddenly they say, well, you know, I'm starting to plan for my funeral. And I say, well, where's your 214? And they look at me and say, what's a 214? I said, your discharge papers. Well, I have them somewhere. I said, you better get them out. And you better put them in with your papers saying what you want for your burial because the funeral director needs that first thing. Your death certificate must say whether or not you were a veteran, and it must say what, what period of time you were a veteran for. Okay. All right. I've seen the, I've seen the plates. They're just they're flat, the, like a bronze. The black, bronze markers are normally people get those because they already have a headstone. But you can actually get the same headstones that they have in Arlington. That can be placed right on your grave if that's what you would like. Really? Wow. Now, how many veterans and family members are here in Georgetown or in your district? We, well, my district a lot more. Here in Georgetown, we have about 520 veterans, uh, according to my last count, and I just re went through the whole thing. It's very hard to keep track of them, and about 100 widows. So there's about 700 or 600, 650 people we're helping here in town. Um, District-wide, I've probably got about 3,000 veterans and another, and maybe 1,000 to 1,500 widows. Wow. Um, because the, the seven towns, Georgetown's my second largest town of my district, with Ips, Ipswich being the biggest. So, Now, all the money that you're, you help with, where does that come from? 
The money depends on exactly which program. If it is a VA program, obviously that's federal money that's coming out of the taxpayer's pocket okay. uh, through the federal government and comes back down again. If it is the program for the state that we are providing, Georgetown pays that tab, they get three quarters of it back a year later. So that's coming out of the taxpayer's pocket. It's a way for the taxpayers to say thank you to what are actually only 7% of our country that have served. Uh, right now we're at around the 7% level and only about 1% are serving today. But just, I expected it to be much higher. We, you and I are of the generation where we were growing up with all the World War II guys. You fought. Um, both my parents were in service during World War II. And this is what you did. Uh, it's a lot different today. Uh, only 17% of our target age group, which is 17 to 28 year olds, are eligible to go into the military. Times have changed dramatically. We all have heard the stories about the judge saying, you got your choice. You're going to either go in the service you know, or go to jail. That doesn't happen anymore. That's one of the things that keeps them out of service. You know, jail, too many dependents, physically unfit. 17% of our young people are only are eligible to go in the service today. Wow. Just amazing. Um, what other kind of benefits can you bring to the town for the... To the town or to the individuals? To the town. To the town. I, um, by doing the, the different service-connected disabilities for all of these, uh, I have been able to put money into the pockets of the veterans. And I try to tabulate that because it gives a sense of what you're getting for hiring me. Um, right now, I think last year it was 250000 for Georgetown. My district-wide, it was almost $2 million that we put into the pockets of veterans who then spend it, hopefully, locally. In their own, right, in their own town. Here in town, yeah. Um, what other types of, of programs are there for, for some of the veterans that are coming back out of the military? In terms of the, the it, a lot depends, of course, on what exactly they need or okay. what their, their problems are um, coming out. The hard thing is making sure that they come and see me so I can hook them up with any, anything that, may be, that they may be eligible for. Um, there are those who have housing issues. You know, they, there's a big push on at the state level to ensure that we eliminate veteran homelessness in the next couple of years. And Massachusetts leads the way on that. They're doing a very good job of trying to find the veterans who are homeless and get them into, not only get them into shelters, but then get them into some sort of a permanent housing arrangement, be that what they call VASH, which is a VA subsidized housing, or Section 8, or anywhere that we can to make sure that they are there, or, or a shelter if necessary. Um, the hard thing is to, to find those who have problems associated with their military service and get them the VA care they need. Uh, perhaps the most traumatic is, is that you hear about today is the PTSD and the traumatic brain injury. Um, if you look at the statistics that they've been talking lately or touting lately, they're talking about suicides at a very high rate every day. <coughs> The, what they don't tell you very often, and you have to do the weeding out on this, is the average age of the suicide for, for veterans is 64, which tells you that it is not the young people. It is, it, there are some of those, yes, they will be in the mix. The problem is the Vietnam veterans. And there is a lot of PTSD out there. There's a lot more PTSD in Vietnam veterans than any other era. There's a lot in this one but they're different types. The PTSD out of the Vietnam era people is because they came back, they were treated very, very poorly, they immediately went to ground, didn't even tell a lot of people that they were veterans. Yeah. You know, and we have tried as a country now to say welcome home. It's very hard to do once you've called them baby killers and spat on them. That's a yeah. given. Today's, the difference is that 
everybody who served over in Afghanistan or Iraq were in the front lines. It doesn't matter. As soon as you had a convoy and you were on the road, you were potentially a target. It wasn't true in Vietnam and times before that. Right. You could have been behind the lines. Not now. They are all in the front lines. So your TBI incidents and your, your from the, the improvised explosive devices and your cases of uh, PTSD just from the, the sheer terror of being there does increase. So we're trying to, we try to spot them, we try to get them help as soon as we can, but the problem with things like PTSD is it's, it's like other psychiatric issues. They don't want help, you yeah. can't help them. Yeah, yeah, it can be very much a silent killer. Yes, it can be, yes, it can be. It can. Um, so if someone is watching and they have not talked to you at all, no matter what age, they should come Make a bring phone call. Me, bring me a copy of your discharge papers. If you can't find them, I'll help you to get them because it's a very critical document for every person who served. It helps you with every VA um, benefit that you can get. It helps you get jobs. It is what you need for when you die. You know, it's there. It's, it's an important document. I'll help them get it. If not, bring yours to my office. I will make copies. I will put you on file. Therefore, if you ever do lose your discharge papers, I've got them. Okay. All right. All good information. I hope I've helped. A lot, a lot more than I ever would have thought. I didn't realize how much, how much your office actually does for people. We are, we are working 24-7, it seems. Um, not really. We work our full work days, and there's always people um, that need the help with just trying to get out there and reach them and get them to come in and see. That's the hard thing. Well, I hope this does that. I do, too. Thank, Thank you, you, Beverly. Thank you very much. It was nice having you here. Thank you. So, check with your veteran agent. Um, I'm Beverly Enos. This is Spotlight Georgetown, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. Thank you for joining us. Bye for now.